Hey everybody, this is Dr. Brian Ray at DBR Bookkeeping, doing business right. I'm making this video as a short part of my short uh, kind of walkthrough of my guide that I just made, the five simple steps to clean your QuickBooks online fast. Um, again, you can click get at that link below here um, and check that out. Um, if you have any questions, you can always schedule a consultation to go with that. Anyway, I just want to spend, try to get as fast as possible because again, we want to make this as fast and as efficient as possible. Focus on the things that are in this guide and you can get your books cleaned up um, and ready for whatever you need to be, whether it be taxes, whether it be to get a loan, whether you're trying to sell your business or just trying to get to know where your business is at. So let's get into it. So number one, we want to get everything categorized. Oh, number one in cleaning every books, is we want to get all our transactions categorized. So all this extra stuff, all these things here, we don't need to really worry about that right now. We want to go to transactions, bank transactions. And again, I'm in a sample company right now. So this is a fictitious company that just kind of gives you a few of things. But again, we have numbers here of all the different accounts that we have and how many transactions are still pending for review. We want to get these for review out of here, either and either categorized, you know, or excluded if, if it's a duplicate. So we want to go through all your transactions here, um, add them. You can click on it, and there you can select the vendor, select the account it's supposed to go to. If you need to write some notes in there as well, whether it's money being received or spent. If there are possible matches of two invoices or possible matches to checks you've written. Uh, you can get all that stuff in there and they uh, there's potential matches. QuickBooks is pretty good about finding those potential matches, but just be careful, especially if there's a lot of transactions of the same amount. Like say you wrote five $100 checks. Well, let's make sure that each check is going to the proper match. So you want to categorize all of your transactions. A couple of things to note about that is that um, if you don't and then don't get these categories right. The most important thing is this category. It can really mess up your reports and really cost you down the road. If you don't know what something is, you can put it as uncategorized income or uncategorized expense. You could even create, you know, a ask my accountant, what <laughs> ask my accountant, ask my bookkeeper, ask my, and they can help you. Something I want to note about is your rules. A lot of QuickBooks accounts do make automatic rules, and maybe you have made rules too. You can check your rules up here. This is a sample account, so there aren't any made here, but many accounts do have a lot of auto rules that were made. Check those rules and don't just assume that they're okay. When you're looking to make a new rule or if you're assessing a rule, you can click the new rule here, give it a title, money in money out and just complete all this information as necessary the most important things is if whether it's an expense or income and the category and the payee and if you're 100 percent about the rule then you can do the auto add but even then there's always some type of transaction that's not quite right so again please double check your rules in this step next step we're going on is step two and that's checking your invoices and unapplied payments this kind of goes connected with step one where we're checking our bank transactions there might be some money received that like say a deposit here is actually connected to an invoice so in this case we are trying to match and this example is really good because here's a deposit and this deposit has these payments these multiple payments for all of these invoices so we want to clear that match those up all these amounts equal properly and it's all good. So if you have any invoices out there, we want to make sure that these are matched up properly. Um, after the words, you can check your reports. Go to reports and you can check your accounts receivable aging summary. It's either here in your favorites or if you need to search it, you can search it right here in the report type. Accounts receivable aging summary. In that report, it will give you a highlight of anybody who owes you money and how long they've owed you money. You want to verify that this is correct. If there's something inaccurate, then we want to either check into these amounts or check into these vendors and potentially do some research into finding these monies. One thing to keep note of is that when you see negative numbers in these this report, that's usually kind of a hint that there might be something up, uh, either an unapplied payment or possibly an overpayment. 
Uh, if you see that there's somebody here that you're like, wait a minute, this person is paid. I know they've paid. That means you got to go and investigate to make sure that is cleared out because that is affecting your balance sheet and your reports in general. So again, if you have a lot of invoices, take care and be diligent of really making sure that these are fixed. This is a very common issue with a lot of businesses and tracking their accounts receivable and all their invoices and making sure this is properly done. So get that done. Next in step three is we want to review our payroll and sales tax records. So from here, if you have payroll with a third party processor, uh, I would highly recommend doing that because payroll is an area you do not want to mess up with. They should be filing your payroll reports and filings and paying what you need to be doing properly. If you're not and you're doing it through QuickBooks or you're doing it, make sure that you are re reviewing those report reports either with your processors or, or you can check it in here. Uh, the sample company does not really have that uh, payroll here, but you can type in the payroll report, payroll summary, and double check your wages and everything and make sure that you are, are up to date on your filings. The next thing you can check also in here is your sales tax. Not all businesses collect and remit sales tax, but if you do, make sure that you check out this sales tax liability report and see if this report is accurate. If you owe money, well, make sure you go pay that. If you find some type of discrepancy in here, that's an area you will, you will need to investigate and make sure you're good. The last thing to do with kind of payroll and to the other taxes is your contractors. There's always a big question of like, what's the difference between a W-2 employee opposed to an independent contractor? Uh, most of these people are sole proprietors, LLCs that are doing work for your business. The magic number is, uh, let me go here to expenses to your vendors, contractors, is $600. $600. If you paid somebody more than $600 over the entire year, uh, you they should be getting a 1099 NEC. And to get that, you need to collect a W-9 from all your contractors. That W-9 has their information, uh, it has their name, their address, and their TIN tax identification number, either their social or EIN. Once you have that W-9, I really recommend putting that into here. So you can search that vendor, say we'll do Books by Bessie, and you have the option to edit their information here, and put in and actually upload that W-9 in here and put in their information. You can also track all their payments that you made to them just by with a click of the button and you can get that report of seeing all, all of your contractors. So if you have a, a lot of contractors, this is a big area that you want to get your, your stuff done. Remember filings for 1099s is January 31st of every year. If you don't, you could be subject to penalties. All right. I think we're good with that. Next is step four, is reconciling your bank accounts. So once you've categorized, we'll say out of that, once you've categorized all of your transactions, you've kind of gone through all your invoices, you, you've checked your tax filings, you said, all right, all these people have paid me, these people I owe me, you've done all that, you want to reconcile your accounts. To reconcile, we're going to go to transactions again and go to reconcile. It's a very simple process, but it can be a little tedious. You want to make sure you have all your bank statements, either digital or through paper, available to review this. Oh, I was actually doing something. Let me, oh, let me get out of here. So what you can do is you're going to select the account that you want to reconcile. So in this case, we'll take the savings account. You're going to get the bank statement. You're going to find the amount as of whatever X date. Put it on there and go to your oldest one first. So say like the beginning of the year, January, January 31st, or whatever that statement date, and say the statement says $850. Great. And then the the date was January 26. Right. Again, you will get a notification if there's transactions that have not been categorized. That's why it's important to categorize things first. Um, but in this case, this is a sample company. An example uh, will assume that everything has been categorized. And you start reconciling. And here, we just want to go through your bank statement and every and everything to make sure that what QuickBooks says you have matches what the bank statement has. This is where you can 
potentially find duplicates, you can find issues, you can find possible checks that are still outstanding that have not been cashed yet that you can go contact that vendor. Hey, what happened to that check that I wrote you two months ago? Why has that been cashed? You're going to go through here and you're going to go check these boxes, line item by line item. There'll be a whole list of them here to make sure that everything is reviewed. Once it's all reviewed, ideally you want to get this difference down to zero and it's going to turn green. That is your magic number saying everything is good. If you see a lot of extra transactions in here, that means that there are duplicates. If this number is way off, that means there's things that are missing. So again, that's why we want to reconcile your accounts. Super important process um, in the cleanup messiness problem and really ensures your your stuff is good. And if your accountant asks you for taxes, is all your stuff reconciled? You can confidently say, yes, I reviewed them. Everything is reconciled. Once you reconcile, you'll say a finish now, big green button. You can do that. If you need to save it for later, you can. And you'll go month by month by month to reconcile your accounts. Cool. So which leads us to our final step, step five, and that is to actually get your reports and review them. Now we're, we've gone into the weeds looking at the, the micro, each little transaction. Now we're going to look at the reports and look at the more macro picture to see what type of issues we may have missed. The big reports that you'll want to focus on is your balance sheet and your profit and loss. Uh, we'll start with the balance sheet. Your balance sheet, you want to make sure that the dates are proper for the date time frame you're looking for. So if you're in tax season, usually you want to go at the end of the year. Last year, it'll pull up um, up to December 31st. The report will also say it. We want to run the report. And we'll actually say, as of this date, this is a snapshot of your business. How much money was in all your bank accounts? How much money was owed to you? Any liabilities you have? All that stuff is as of this date. So you can see, hey, there might be some sales tax that you didn't pay or you know, you're looking for the. If you see negative numbers, that could be a potential red flag. If you see something that's just like really excessive or something that you don't recognize or have no idea what it's doing there, that's good. Remember, this is not any type of expenses or revenue. This is just how much was in your bank account. How much was it, did you owe on your credit card as of this date? right? Uh, how much did you owe in sales tax as of that, that date and your owner equity? Again, this is really important to have and review. Once that looks okay, they also want to check out your profit and loss. This is the report that much more people are familiar with. Again, double check your dates. Go to either last month, last year, um, in this case, we'll look at last year. It's going to look at an entire time frame. The balance sheet looked at a single date. The profit and loss will look at a time frame for the entire year, the entire month. Uh, you can even customize it to an, a quarter or two-week period. We're going to run this report. As you can see, it's from January through December. And this breaks down all your revenue and your expenses. And again, you just want to review it to see if there's any big glaring issues. If you see something, you can click in here. And it will give you a more detailed report of all the transactions for the entire year that went to that specific account. So if you wanted to see, say, um, your accounting fees for the entire year, right, you can click on that um, and it will give you a whole list of your accounting fees or your job supplies or how much you spend on your phone. And it's a really good report. Again, if you see negative numbers, not saying negative numbers are bad all the time, but it is kind of a slight little red flag that you might want to investigate. Uh, and it can really help and make sure you have a good, clear picture. Oh, and once you have that, identify any final issues and you've basically wrapped up your cleanup. Uh, don't double check with your bookkeeper or CPA to make sure, hey, if you have any questions, but that is what you need. In five easy steps, we have done your cleanup. Now, in my in my handout, I did include a to ask some questions about some red flags, whether to do this cleanup by yourself or to hire somebody. Again, if you can do this yourself, if you have a very few small transaction load and you feel comfortable reconciling your accounts and categorizing your transactions. And also, if you have the time to regularly review your books uh, on a weekly basis. Now, if you are spending more than five hours per month on bookkeeping, 
or you are literally months behind and or you have hundreds or thousands of transactions that still need to be categorized, you might be want to consider a bookkeeper to help with this cleanup process. This is a tedious process, is a time consuming process, and your time and energy could potentially be used in other areas way more effective to help your business grow. Other things you might want to consider is if you have a lot of invoices or if you have a lot of accounts payable, bills that you're paying out, or if you just have a lot of bank and credit cards that because all those accounts need to be reconciled and reviewed month by month by month. And if you have 8, 10, 12, 20 accounts, it can be a little bit overwhelming to go through and reconcile everything. So again, if you have any questions about this guide that I've given you, if you have any questions about just the, the basic cleanup process, follow those steps and you'll be good. Again, that guide is down below. You can also schedule a consultation for me with me. It is free of charge. We can talk about business. If you have a question on any of those steps or you just want some clarity on how to maybe do something, feel free to call me. There's no charge to it. I'd be happy to help you. I want to make sure that small businesses, entrepreneurs are thriving financially because one of the biggest issues that small businesses fail is because of poor cash flow, poor financial decisions, and you don't want to be that person, that statistic of that doesn't make their business thrive. So again, it's my pleasure to help. If you have any questions, check it out. Please subscribe to my channel. And again, I'm Dr. Brian Rea, DBR Bookkeeping, doing business right.